Okay, we are now recording this session. So um, everybody will receive it after the event in the next couple of days. Today, I'm with Dean Meisenheimer, our Director of Sales Engineering. Dean's gonna be your subject matter expert to talk about Gimel Records for today's session. We're gonna be talking through how to create and use managed properties and rule sets. Format for today will be the usual, about 15 to 20 minutes of discussion and demonstration, followed by any of your questions. Feel free to post your questions in the Q&A area of your Zoom bar, and we'll be sure to get to those after the demonstration portion. And for today, we'd like to kind of kick things off here with a quick poll for you all. Um, the question on the poll is, are your properties and metadata consistent across all your record repositories? If you could just take a quick, quick second to answer that, that would be helpful. Interesting, not one yes yet. So, okay, all right. Uh, many no's and a somewhat. So thank you very much for answering that. We appreciate that. And Dean, I think I'm good with what we need to do and I'm gonna hand things off to you. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Marcia. Uh, all right, let's go to the next slide here. So we're gonna talk about managed properties and rule sets in Gimel records today. Uh, and these may be features if you've uh, if you've done a lot of work setting up your file plan, creating record classes, especially around creating classification rules or legal hold rules. What you may have discovered is sometimes uh, getting your rules to pick up kind of everything you have can be challenging. Um, and so we're going to talk about that and talk about some techniques to try and make, quite frankly, make your life easier and make it easier to maintain your Gimel record system. Um, and so I've got a couple of slides and then we'll jump in and actually kind of show you some of this. Um, <clears throat> show you some of this. So the first thing I just want to mention is when it comes to Gimel records, right? Having what's called a good information architecture makes records management more effective. It makes it easier. And the information architecture is that combination of the structure of your information. Do you have site consistency in your sites and your libraries and content types and metadata on your file shares? Do you have consistency in folder structures? Because Gimbal Records uses properties to drive how it does record classification, how retention triggers fire, how legal hold rules are set up and record filter rules and even custom views in your inbox, right? That's all driven by the properties. And I like to use the word properties very specifically, not metadata because it's more than the metadata, right? If you look at the little wordle off to the right, properties are combinations of system information. What repository? When was it created? When was it last modified? It's location-based information. What's the name of the SharePoint site or the library? Uh, what is the, uh, what's the folder name, right? Those are all things that come into play uh, as part of the properties. And then there's the custom metadata you may have defined in your system, right? So those all make up the properties that we can leverage as we set up our rules to drive the automation in Gimel records. Unfortunately, <laughs> systems get deployed over a period of years, right? It's not uncommon that you may have file shares that have content from 10 or 15 years ago. You've got on-premise SharePoint environments, SharePoint 2016, SharePoint 2019. You may even have some, you know, some, some older SharePoint still out there. Now you've got SharePoint online. You may have Box and a common information architecture often isn't part of the planning process of rolling those systems out, right? They get rolled out by different departments oftentimes for different projects. 
uh, or for different use cases. Uh, the different systems kind of store and track information different ways and have different capabilities. And so your properties wind up getting defined a little differently across your different systems and across your sites and libraries, even between SharePoint and SharePoint Online. And so that's where managed properties and rule sets can really come in and make your life a lot easier. Let's go to the next slide here. Here's an example, right? This is this is a real world example, and I hate to say it, but it's a real world example from the Gimel demo system. <laughs> so we we kind of live, you know, we have the the same issues that that you have in the real world, right? Um, in this example, I'm actually showing properties and metadata from three different systems. I have a box environment. I have SharePoint Online. And I have SharePoint on-premise, a, a SharePoint 2016 environment. Each repository has similar metadata, but it's described differently, right? You can see the inconsistency as I've tried to really highlight him here on the screen. Uh, I have legal documents, uh, matter files. We'll just look at how matter, matter name is described there in the red box. In SharePoint on-premise, it's matter number. In box, it's matter number. Good. And SharePoint Online, it's matter or case name. Case closed. It's case closed in SharePoint Online and in Box, but it's is closed in SharePoint On-Prem. An organization. I have owning organization in SharePoint On-Prem. I have originating organization in SharePoint Online, and I don't even have organization in my Box environment. So. How do we create rules that can pick up records across all of this, right? Without creating these massive rules with all these ors and ands built into them. Well, that's what managed properties uh, is uh, is all about. And so, as I go through this, you know, please uh, please feel free to type your questions in the Q and A box. Uh, I can't see the chat box as we go through this, but type them in the Q and A box, and we'll get them either in uh, in flight or we'll catch them all at the end. So you should see my, my Gimel records environment, the familiar three pie charts across the top. Uh, this is the, the monitor screen in, uh, in Gimel records. And you know, as you all know, for any record, if we come in here and uh, we take a look at the properties on a record, right? we're going to see that we've got all of these properties that we captured. And as we've talked about, the challenge can be inconsistency across my, my different uh, content repositories. Well, as you're building your file plan, as you're setting up your retention triggers, your legal holds, all of that, right? we need to be able to, to kind of deal with that. And so let's take a look at different ways to do that. Let's go to our file plan. And over here on the left, when you go into the plan area, right? you're gonna have to be a records manager to do this. But you go into plan and on the left under options, you see manage properties and you see rule sets. That's where we're going to have our focus today. Let's open manage properties. When I do that, you see a list of all of the managed properties that I have defined in my Gimel records environment. Right? I've got, uh, got a number of them to deal with, with different scenarios. If I want to create a new managed property, I just come up here and you see the create button at the top. I click that, it'll let me create a new managed property. So let's come in here, matter and case name was one of our, our problem children. So let's take a look at that. If we click on the three dots out here to the right, the ellipsis, it shows me my managed property name is matter or case name. That's what I'm going to be using in all of my rules. All of the properties that make up matter or case name from my different content sources are all of these different permutations. Matter number, right? That was uh, in, in one of our SharePoint repositories. Matter number was in box, but box, when we capture the properties, puts the term custom metadata dot in front of it. So I need to, to, to have that in here. So matter number, custom metadata dot matter number, uh, matter or case name, matter file, case information, case underscore name. 
any of these different permutations of the matter number or matter name will now be resolved to matter or case name in my rules. So I can use this term in my rules and it will pick up any properties that match any of these. Makes life a lot easier to resolve the, the inconsistencies across your metadata. Okay. Let's create a new one so you can kind of see what that process looks like because organization was another one of our, our problem properties. I'm going to click on create and that brings up the create manage property dialog. I'm going to come in here and type in uh, organization. That's going to be the name of my, uh, my new managed property. And so now I want uh, originating organization. I want uh, owning organization. Those were two of the ones I know that we had in there. Uh, I know I could have department out there in some locations. Maybe I even have division in some. So now I've got four different types of properties that we could capture from our different uh, content types and metadata in our different repositories. They will all resolve to organization and I can use the term organization everywhere that I'm going to create a rule. So let's create that. We now see organization here in our list and you can see the managed property. <clears throat> so now, Let's go use that in a location. Let's go use that in, in a real world, okay? So let's go to our record classes. And uh, here's my big bucket record class, and here's my administration record category. And let's come down here to security management. So you can see I've got an existing rule here. So we're gonna edit that classification rule. And today, ADM04, my security management, is only picking up records from my file share in security management folder. Well, I want to add and pick up other, other locations where the organization is security. So I'm going to click my pull down and I'm going to hit OR to start a new rule. And now to use my managed property, it's like using any other property when I create a rule. I'm just going to type in organization equals security. And now any record that gets crawled by Gimel Records where any of those permutations of organization, the metadata property is set to security, that will match my managed property. It will match this rule. Those records will now be assigned to ADM04. So we've used a managed property to update that. Uh, now, maybe at some point in the future, another content source comes online or somebody creates, hopefully not, a new metadata column with some permutation of organization. All you have to do is update your managed property. You don't have to go update all of your rules. So it's one place to go update the information. Here's another example. If you use case-based records, right, you know you have to create a case rule that creates your individual case files underneath the record class. You can use manage properties there also. So let's come in here and let's go to edit our record class. Here's our record class definition. And you see down here at the bottom of the screen, our case file rule is using originating organization. Well, that's great for SharePoint Online because that's where we're using that property. But what about SharePoint? What about Box? So it's not creating case files for anything in those repositories. How about if we just change that case file rule to now use our new managed property? Now, whether the record is in SharePoint Online, SharePoint On-Premise, or Box, it will use whatever the value of the managed property for organization is to come in and create record cases underneath ADM01. So managed properties can be used anywhere that you would use any other property in a rule, right? Uh, the same is true for rule sets. So let's go take a look at rule sets now. 
if I look at my rule sets, rule sets are a way, for lack of a better term, of creating like shortcuts to a location. So if you're going to create, you know, as you go through and create your rules for legal holds, for classification, for other things, if you're going to be pointing at the same location, you don't want to have to type that rule over and over and over again. A rule set lets you create a shortcut that will basically point to those. So let's take a look at this one here. I have a rule set called 0365 Public Sector. And I'm just going to click on the Edit button. And here you see what my rule set does is it predefines this one rule for me. The site URL equals this whole URL here. So if I'm going to have different classification rules that need to point to my public sector site, I would have to create this rule in every single record, record class classification rule. By creating a rule set and giving it a name, I have it created once, and now I can just point to the rule set in my rules. And I'll show you an example of using that. That was a really simple one. And the nice thing about that is I can see if we click on the pull down and we go to usage, I'm using that rule set in four different record classes. So the classification for all of these, these different record classes, I would have had to create that rule four separate times. And what happens if we update the public sector site and maybe move it to a new, more modern site and the URL changes? I'd have to go change all of these. Now I just change my rule set and these are now automatically updated. But here's an example. I have my QMS documents. This one's a little more involved. You can have multiple conditions in a rule set. It doesn't have to be just a single line. Here we're saying, all right, anything in the operations site in the policies and procedures library that is a QMS document, well, what if we just take out operations? Now we're basically creating a rule set we can use that says, Anything in policies and procedures that is a QMS doc, I can have a rule set now that will have both of these conditions built into it, and I can use it in my uh, in my in my rules anywhere within uh, within Gimel. So let's take a look at using that in the real world. Let's go back to our record classes, and I'm going to come back into my big bucket, and this time we're going to go to audit and compliance. So I'm going to expand uh, Audit 02. Here's my standard operating procedures. Okay. So now <clears throat> let's look at our classification rules for this record class. And you can see we're picking up policies from anywhere in SharePoint. And we're looking at the policy type to make sure it's a standard operating procedure. Well, we're not picking up our QMS documents. So Instead of having to rebuild that complex rule in here, I'm just going to add an or so that we can have a second rule. And you see up here at the top of my classification rules, there's a pull down menu. And when I click on that, it shows me all of my rule sets. And I'm going to choose QMS documents and I'm going to click add the rule set. And it pops that in there automatically for me. I don't have to build this every time I might want to use it in a classification rule. And we can get rid of this uh, <clears throat> empty line at the top that we created to get our, our rule break. But now I've added a second rule to this record class that uses my rule set. If I wanted to delete the rule set, I just click the X off to the right and the whole rule set will get deleted. Okay. So that's an example of using rule sets in classification rules, and, and they can be applied in other, other rules throughout Gimel records as well. Uh, and, you know, again, one, it makes your life easier because you can create reusable shortcuts uh, that will point to specific things. And secondly, if this were to ever need to change, I don't have to go change any rules. I just go change the rule set in one location. And now everywhere that uses that rule set is updated. Now, if you forgot everything I just said <laughs> and uh, you can't find the slides and, and you're like, oh, I know he talked about how to do that, but I don't remember where it was. Well, the way you find that is in Gimel Records, 
the little question mark here off to the right. If you click that, that will take you to the online documentation for Gimbal Records. Right? So now you can come in here and you can do a quick search and you can say, I want to go look for manage properties. When I click on that, uh, here you see uh, the rule builder. Uh, if I say all results, manage properties are under rule builder. So if I click on rule builder on the right nav here, it says manage properties. That takes me right to the documentation on how to create managed properties. The same is true for creating, uh, you know, creating the rule of the rule sets. If you want to come in and look for rule sets, just do a similar search. You'll be in good shape. You can uh, read up on the rule sets, or you can always refer back to the recording of our education session here. So again, if you do have any questions about any of this stuff, type it in the uh, the Q and A box um, as we uh, as we go through. And I'm going to go uh, back to the slides now and go uh, back to Marsha. Oh, so, hey, I'm glad you showed the online documentation, Dean. I I feel like sometimes that's not known as as we would think. Um, it's great. We do have um, a couple questions. Um, the first question came on early on when you were starting, in case that helps. But the question is, are these properties the internal names or display names with regards to SharePoint Online? That's a great question. Um, they are the display names. So the, the easiest way to see what the property is, is go to the manage area or from the main dashboard there in, uh, in Gimbal Records and just view the properties uh, screen of a record. However it's displayed in that screen uh, is how you need to put it into your rule. But it's not, I know what you're referring to with the internal name within SharePoint. It's not the, the name with the underscores and the X's and the percents and all that good stuff. Great, thank you. Um, second question we got is, um, how would the case file rule function if records had more than one of the metadata fields listed in the managed property? Ooh, um, well, you should, you probably, you, you'll need to be careful when you set up your managed properties because for example, I was using uh, organization, right? I shouldn't have, two different properties in my managed property definition from the same repository, right? I should have in SharePoint Online, I'm just gonna go back. In SharePoint Online, it's originating organization and SharePoint, it's owning organization. Now I created a managed property that was just called organization. So when Gimbal Records crawls a record in SharePoint on-prem and crawls a record in SharePoint online, when it uses organization, it'll just use the value legal or the value that would be, you know, be here. Um, so you shouldn't have that conflict. Um, if there's more kind of detail to your question, feel free to shoot an email and I'll be happy to, to try and provide a more detailed answer, but I don't. I don't think you would have that conflict with a managed property. Uh, another question, can the rule sets be used in record filters? They can. So uh, rule sets can be used in filters, legal hold rules, I believe, classification rules. I'll confirm that. Um, but yeah, I, I believe they're, they're, they're flexible in where they're used. I know the managed properties are. Okay. Um, just had another one pop in. Um, is there any way to search based on file name or does the search only work for title? And what happens if there's nothing in the title field? Yeah, so the title, so the, the, the title that appears on the Gimbal records in the manage screen, the monitor screen, the record name essentially, by default, it will be the value of the title field from SharePoint. 
Um, if there is no value in the title field, it will default to the file name. For file shares, it defaults to the file name because there is no title field. Um, and for box, I don't believe there's a title field, so it defaults to the file name. So it's for SharePoint, it will the the the, the record name will essentially be the the value of title unless title is blank, and then it will default to the file name instead. So when you do a search on title, it will take whatever the record essentially the record name is, whatever that value of the record name is in in Gimel Records. And that's what it's searching against. Checking. Nope. I think that's all the questions, Dean. Thank you so much. Okay. Great questions. Yeah, they were great questions. Thanks for submitting them to everybody. Appreciate that. So yeah, that's a wrap for today. So thanks for attending. We hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, next slide, Dean, will show what's upcoming. Perfect. So this is what's coming next as far as our education series. Again, these are offered twice a month over our Gimel Records, Gimel Physical, and Gimel Discover products. Um, feel free to join any one of them, even if you're not currently utilizing the product. Uh, maybe you are exploring adding one of the other Gimbal products. You're always welcome to join those sessions and learn more. Uh, the next education session for Gimbal Physical is September 12th. But for records, um, October 10th, we haven't gotten this schedule out yet, but this is going to be part of our Q4 series, but we are um, holding October 12th for Gimel Records, and it's going to be on the inbox and what's new there. So stay tuned. We'll be getting out the registration and details for the Q4 series soon, probably here in the coming weeks. If you have any more questions about today's topic or have suggestions for future sessions like this, please feel free to drop me an email, send me your suggestions, and we'll certainly add them to the list. That's it, everybody. Thank you again for joining. We hope to see you next time and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.